As you guys can all see, we have Mr. Dallas Eggers here. Um, I guess last time we had chatted, he said he was going to talk about the importance of volunteers. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to change and give us a little update on CAB. Uh, next week, we have the ladies from River Town Nutrition coming to speak about their new business. And the week after that, you guys definitely will not want to miss. Uh, my lovely wife will be coming in to talk about the track season and yeah, I'll give a little preview of state meet. This will be the following day, so we're hoping to have a few athletes there this year. Dallas? I don't know where this is going to be easiest for you, so I'll just kind of meander. Larry, are we okay there? Um, a neat place, which was basically founded on volunteers. Freedom Park it was a tourist park before this. Uh, bought by the city from the Cotter family in about 19, God, 1913, 1914, somewhere in there. I have the copy of the deed somewhere in my piles of stuff. Cool. But uh, the so. Family, the Cotter family? Yes. Yep. Yep. And so this and has been an. Left here? In the well, Mary, Mary Beeler is a Cotter. It's a Cotter. Okay. It came from her family. Cotter. And Al, and actually Mike. And uh, Steve is still with us, so there's, and John lives in Northfield, so I believe there's either five or six of their family left. But anyway, so this started as a volunteer place. It's gone through many changes over the years, most of it fueled by volunteers. Of course, the city chipping in with the heavy equipment and some of the things like that, but basically this is a volunteer organization. Uh, all of you are volunteers, and I'm going to ask a question. Now think about this a little bit. In this room, how many of you are members of two or more volunteer organizations. Raise your hand, please. Two or more. Okay? Almost everybody. Almost everybody. And I find that to be true in almost every volunteer organization. Because I always kind of have teased people about this over the years that the same 300 people run everything in Prescott. The other 3,700 kind of ride on our backs. And that's A, a left-handed compliment to us, and B, kind of taking a shot at them. Because if they're not volunteering, I always ask, why? Why aren't you? And so a lot of things go into this. Me, I am personally the president of three different volunteer organizations. Cab Company, been around for 21 years. Prescott Historical Society, which has been around for over 60 years. And the uh, Cable Commission, of which I've been on longer than I care to tell you. And they can't, haven't kicked me off yet, so I'll they let me talk smart and act stupid and pay me a little bit, so, and it provides a service to my community. Um, we all face some challenges here. Things have changed dramatically in the last 60 years. When I was wandering around out here as a five-year-old and six-year-old and a seven-year-old, there probably were not five to seven families in town who had cabins up north. We were not an affluent community, and so we didn't own cabins. We just didn't. And a cabin up north in those days was a, uh, about one-sixth the size of this with walls you could see through, and the heat was substandard. And if you had electricity and a flush toilet, that was deluxe, because most of them didn't. So in other words, what I'm saying is that 60 years ago, people didn't leave on the weekends. They were here. They were in our communities. They were in our communities all the time. I watched this as our community became a more affluent community. The volunteers have kind of drifted away because now there's probably two or 300 families in town who own cabins. And they scurry up there on the weekends and they're not here. And that's not a point of blame, that's just a point of fact. That is just a point of fact. And we all struggle. How do we get these people to volunteer? Um, the cab company, about three weeks ago, we had our signs to put up, some of which you have uh, graciously helped us pay for. Uh, our ball field, a couple negatives, but 99.5% absolute positive response from everyone who has seen it. Uh, we finished, we're about 95% done. We still got to grind through a few things, but it looks tremendous. Uh, New Richmond came to town Monday and saw it for the first time and they were like, oh, wow. That's volunteers. We had 93 different people there on that day to put signs up. Now, how in the world do you get 93 people to do anything? Maybe to eat. Other than that, you aren't going to get 93 people to do anything. How do we get that? First of all, we had an in-house resource of the baseball players. 
So from the team, we had about 35 kids. Some of the seniors had testing to do, and there were other things that they had to do. But we had 30 to 35 kids. Um, cab company members, the oldest cab company member there was 84, I believe. Uh, the youngest was 21. And so we had, oh, probably 15, 20 of us wandering around. We had moms, we had dads, we had grandpas, we had grandmas, we had sisters, all coming to make that work, all volunteers. Nobody made a dime that day, and we worked wonders. People had smiles on their faces. They stood back and says, wow, I helped with that. It's pretty cool. And now when they drive by the park, they have kind of taken ownership because they've got some time equity into it. And as you know, in our modern society, time is the most expensive thing we have and don't have. So you got you to gotta budget time. That people say, well, what did you do today? I said, well, I started this madness about 7 this morning, you know, doing this and that and whatever. And uh, so it's just what it is. So my whole issue in volunteers is how do we get more of them? How do we contact those people? I went to a meeting when I was still working at school, it was about seven, eight years ago, and they talked about the failure of communication. The absolute and abysmal failure of communication in the modern age. They listed 14 different ways to communicate. 14 different ways, and we failed. Because you use a certain three, you use a certain three, you use a certain two, you use these four, you use those four, you use that five, and your interweavings are that you miss each other because you don't use a common one. So they said that what an organization should do, and I mentioned this at school, it went over like a lead balloon because they're addicted to phones, some of them. Some of them are emails. But they basically said that every organization should choose three, and only three. Any official organization should only have three ways to communicate because otherwise it gets filtered down and everybody misses it in passing. So that's one thing about your organizations. You need to sit down and talk about communication. How do we talk to our members? I love your email, Char, because then I know what's going on in this kind of stuff. Email, I can't miss it. I can send you a reply. I can ask you a question without interrupting your life at that minute. Whereas when I was the tech director, I would get 150 phone messages a day. I would have to sit still basically the entire day and look at phone messages. Well, that would have been fine, except I was still expected to do something. So phones are great, but if you're the person on the end of the 150 phone calls, it's not so great. Because they'll talk for three to five minutes on something where you just all you need to say is, help, but I got to listen to the whole thing. And I can't get back to them, now I have to call them. Whereas the school has gone to a ticket system and emails, and that has really streamlined it. We're much more efficient that way. Um, Andy and Kyle will make a phone call if they need to, but otherwise, the teachers are pretty good at giving the details that they need. Now I've got a record, I've got a receipt, i got a reminder, and I can keep records of all of that for in the future. So that's kind of what the school has done. Um, we've been asking for volunteers for cable TV for years. We employ the kids. Um, we hire them to do our broadcast. We hire them to run cameras for us and this type of thing. And people think, well, they're just kind of fooling around. These kids are learning job skills, professional, modern job skills. We have had kids leave us that uh, David Yanish is now the morning producer on Channel 5 in the Twin Cities. Scott Schneider is the sportsman in Dallas, Texas. He started in the cubby holes of Prescott, Wisconsin. So these are job skills. They aren't just something they're doing to make 20 bucks a game. Those are modern communication skills. And we have a devil of a time trying to get kids to come in to volunteer to run the cameras, even though they make about 12 bucks an hour. And so it's difficult to contact them because they use this and they use this. So the commonality. So what do we do in town? What do we do in town? How are you going to solve the Kiwanis problem of how do we get more people to volunteer? We're going to continue to do what we always did. You know, you're going to see people, you're going to talk, you're going to have your meetings, you're going to hope you're getting in the paper and this type of thing. And we're pretty much going to have the same results that we've had for the last decade or two. And in volunteer organizations, what happens is a normal cycle. You will go into a volunteer organization, you'll put five or six years into it, and then you kind of slow down and then you're gonna leave. Most of us will go join another volunteer organization, just kind of for a change of pace, but that's a normal progression of volunteers. You get about five, six good years out of them, then they kind of peter out, and either you revitalize them 
or they're going to go somewhere else. I was on the Prescott Foundation when it was first started. I was on the Freedom Park Board when it first started. I've, I've moved from that to other things, but we haven't gained anymore. So I've been thinking about this. Uh, I think what we really need to do, it would be interesting to see a compilation of all the volunteer organizations in the entire city of Prescott. How many are there? Are there eight, 15, 20, 40? I have no idea. To me, what we should be doing as volunteer organizations is we should have a common meeting and invite every single volunteer organization we can find in the town to that meeting. And then we should talk about, okay, how do we have a member drive? How do we get people who are interested in A or B or C to come and volunteer? I find out with most people, they're a little hesitant to volunteer because they're not sure what they're getting into. They're saying, oh, I, really, I really don't have any skills, I can't really help you. In CAB, we tell people, if you can make phone calls once in a while for us, we would love that. Because every organization has a whole layer of things that needs to get done. So what I'm kind of proposing today is maybe Kiwanis would be the starter of a overarching volunteer initiative in the city and invite representatives from every single volunteer in the town, get together in the same room and say, how can we help each other? How can we help each other? And so I'm not going to talk a lot more about this because I'm going to put the ball in your court simply because you invited me here and I'm taking advantage of the opportunity. And so uh, any feedback on that, uh, suggestions, I mean, maybe we start to send emails back to Shar about volunteer organizations, how many there are. I don't know. Maybe you start sending them to me. But you would just, Shar, you wouldn't do anything except keep track. You would just be the scorekeeper of the volunteer organizations so that we could come back in two months and say, well, we got 19 of them. Now let's see when we can have a meeting. Because small towns run on volunteers. And it will always be that way. It has always been that way. I come from a family of volunteers, and most of you in this room do also. It's in your family, it's in your heritage. Well, we need to find some of these other people in our community that we can invite into these volunteer organizations. One thing about CAB is I have met a ton of younger parents and this type of thing that I never would have ever met, except by them coming to cab company functions, coming to the baseball field and helping for an hour or two, coming to our banquets. I never would have met them. And I've met some amazingly wonderful people. And so volunteers are more about what jobs you do, sometimes about the people you meet. So I have put the ball in your court. And if you want to, remember I represent three of them, so I'll, <laughs> I'll have three different hats on that day because we all face the same problems. So let's see what we can do to spark the volunteers in the city of Prescott. So thank you. I've noticed, Alice, is, you know, it seems like we require the students to have X amount of volunteer service yep. and scholarships. Yep, so correct. Thinking, I think we're thinking that we're nurturing to to do it so you find out it's not as painful as you think and, yes. and everyone can do it. Yes. But I think, I don't know where we lose them other than it can be tedious and boring to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people, and I don't want to necessarily pick on younger people, but they, they want, this is what I need to do, and they want to get it done. They mm -hmm. don't want to sit around the table and how are we going to get this done? And you know, it, it's more of an immediate. We need to get this done. So yeah, and like an instant gratification. So these are kind of things I've kind of been running up against. Um, I think people want to help, but all the volunteers are busy. So how do you lay it out? So this is what needs to be done. Yeah. And that's critical. We run into that in cab too, because we have some members that says, "I'm not going to come to the meeting. Tell me what you want me to do." These are the things I can do when you need me, let me know. But they don't come to the meeting. So that's a, a real factor. So maybe if you could give a list for each volunteer organization of things that need to be done, and the people, we would send something or somehow communicate to them, and they would see, oh, well, in this organization, I could do this, or I could do this. And it would limit the number of meetings that they would have to come to, Sharif, because that is a real point. It is. When I have things to do with the baseball field, I have people show up that don't come to the meetings, but they're going to help that day. And another thing is that 
uh, for CAB, we have tried to start to do a better job of keeping all the members informed of everything that went on. So virtually everything that we do, I send out a long extensive email of everything that happened. And it works for two things. It informs our members and it's records for our organization as a nonprofit. What have you been doing? You know, so we can go back and say, oh, we did A, B, C, D, here's the emails. So the emails end up being part of the notes of our organization that we have contacted our members on a regular basis because that's part of what we need to do. But I know, Shar, it's tough. It is. But um, you can either leave it as is and it won't change, or we can try something and fail. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I just have no idea how to start. The who. Yes. Because the who's I know are already drowning. Yeah, absolutely. People keep asking me to do more things, and I said, I'm sorry, there's yeah, still absolutely. only 24 hours in the day. And, and so. When you add in the churches, too, I, I just think of our churches. Oh. You know, within each church, there's a ton oh. of things that oh, yes. people do. Yes. Volunteers, and um, a lot of hours are given. To, to the churches, to those people that are committed to churches. Um, but you're right that this town, and in fact, sometimes I think life itself runs on volunteers. And oh, yes. It just amazes me always uh, to see what happens because of volunteers and what would not happen if people don't step up. Oh, in my opinion, the city of Prescott would have ground to a halt decades and decades and decades ago without volunteers. Being, in, being one of the local historians, Mary's trying, she's been pounding that stuff in my head for years, maybe one of these days I'll learn something, but the city of Prescott was built on volunteers. It really was. Historically, it was built on volunteers. From the churches, to the schools, to the civic organizations, to the Odd Fellows Hall, all of these things, they're our history. They're what made us. And we need to keep those to be vibrant organizations or throughout the history of Prescott, you see us come to Crest and then we go down and this type of thing. And that's normal. But maybe between all of us, we can come and maybe give a list and say, okay, this organization needs this, this one needs this, this is how you could help here, this is how you could help there. And give people a laundry list of things that each volunteer group needs on a single sheet of paper. Uh, I'm sure Sean would run it in the journal. We could put it on television. We can stick it on a myriad of Facebook pages in town. But this is really a crucial thing to keeping our community going. We have tremendous potential, but it takes people. I think Prescott has a ton of volunteers. I absolutely do. And when I talk to the, anyone face to face, there's not anyone that wouldn't do anything that I've asked them to do. Yep. But the problem is leadership. Yep. And I'm, I'm not dissing our town about anything. However, sometimes I find a failure of leadership and vision. So everybody's running around doing their good deeds and the best things they can do, but we're not all working for the same goal or working together or, you know, it, it just seems like we have a lack of leadership and more people need to actually step up to the plate and say, I'm going to take this on and I'm going to do it. Because those people are leaving. I mean, oh, yeah. they're getting old. Oh, yes. Hey, I'm 67. I get it. Oh, but you're a young man. <laughs> well, to, to you, to you, but to the people we are appealing to be volunteers, I'm not. <laughs> no, I, uh, but I agree wholeheartedly with uh, uh, Char. It is, it is leadership, and there's a lot of people who I feel, even if they have the skills, they don't believe that they do, and so that they find it hard. Uh, and, and let's also be honest, uh, time is a real factor. You know, kids, people with kids, that, that's what they are to be now. Young parents, uh, you know, they're raising children and they're going to this athletic event or this dramatic event. Or, I mean, life is really hectic. And, uh, and so then you all end up with old people like me and Mark and, well, uh, to do a lot of the stuff that we're wearing out because we're just, we're just getting old. Well. From the school perspective, where it's, it's, I think it's evolved a little bit. We used to have a high school volunteer group mm -hmm. um, that was cut about, I think about four or five years ago when the cuts came through too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of been replaced right now. The community ed does the day of service. Yes. And they have a lot of younger kids that will come to that. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, the high school for the first time is doing their the community service day. Um, they put the kids in charge of finding the different programs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a real struggle, and, and to be bluntly honest, part of it is but the teachers who are overseeing that aren't necessarily from Prescott either, um, so they're not going to have the connections and so forth. So 
for high school kids, not to speak for them, but um, sustained volunteerism is very difficult. Because if you're in baseball during that season, you can during this time, but not for that time. Um, so an organization, an organizations are getting together and saying these are the needs. Uh, what the school district can probably provide in some ways is volume. That on like tomorrow we are going to have, hopefully, <laughs> uh, most of them show up. That we're going to have 300 plus kids out doing different things. Some are coming to the Freedom Park to plant flowers. Um, I have 25 kids going down to MDC <coughs> down by the the condos now too. Uh, is that's something we talked to the city. That's something that they needed to have happen. So is this a new thing, Steve? Are this is this the first, first year they've yeah, done that this. Yeah, that is really a good idea. So are the kids? Not having classes tomorrow, they're going to just do volunteer. So at the high school, the there will not be classes tomorrow. And everybody will be involved in doing something. Everyone who comes to school tomorrow is part of a, uh -huh. right. there's a little bit of concern, like parents are going to say, oh, my kid doesn't need to come then because they're not learning. Um, so we'll see how that goes too. When they're learning a very valuable lesson. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> but I do think our struggle was, we don't have those connections, so if, if a teacher who doesn't live here is like, oh, what, what could my group of kids do? It, it's hard to it's hard to send them all in all different directions. Well, that's where <laughs> Dallas is saying about getting a that's list. And I noticed that. when uh, the day of service with Penny and the people that were in charge of that, they did have a, a list. Here's things you can contribute. Here's things that you can do, and that was really helpful. You could pick from a variety of projects, there must have been about 10 things going on uh, to do it. That that was really helpful, and then people didn't have to lead that. They just joined in on what looked interesting, whether it be tying blankets or uh, stuffing uh, food into a plastic bag to give out to somebody or pulling weeds. Or and it's amazing that it used to be um, Crestnet did the half days, and they had a half day yeah. in service, which is difficult as a parent. Uh, but the, the, the day of service started on one of those half days. So many of the kids, the elementary kids, stayed and did that as well yeah. because they, yeah. they didn't have to have daycare and so forth at home. So they had several hundred yeah. elementary yeah. kids, and you'd be, you'd be surprised what those young kids can accomplish in that. And That's that right. too. So we don't have the half days volume, anymore. Volume helps. So I think we had about 60 to 80 people there this last time. It was a, uh -huh. it was a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So we had less people, but we're still the there's still the opportunity to make the impact. Yeah, and I was there, and they everybody was working really diligently. Looked like they were having a great time, and I think again learning and learning an important lesson of reaching out to other people and knowing that no matter what, you have some skills that you can share. Some of this goes way back to where you start on communications. Mm -hmm. There's so many different types of communications. And there isn't one. It used to be maybe the newspaper you know, was that it, not a lot of people I talk to don't don't subscribe to that. They, they miss a lot for doing it. A lot of people don't have cable or don't uh, are interested or, or don't know what what's there. Um, you know, and maybe they, they, they're not in the churches in town and, and, and that kind of thing. So it's, you know, people who were residents of the area didn't know for a year or two that they didn't have a paper. You know, and, and that particular person should should have, you know, know on that. But it's getting back to that, and that's one of the things I struggled with when I was on the Pres Prescott Foundation. One of our problems was communications you know, in the city. There was, it hasn't changed. There, there was no easy answer same, to that. Same problem. Same problem. Uh, and, and, There's you know, no one place to go and find out what's going on today anywhere. Nope. Right. Right. Is there any kind of online database for volunteers? Is that in existence? Because if you did have that final meeting where everyone comes together and you get a list of all the volunteers, you could have a way to communicate everyone on one platform. Because everyone has the internet, everyone has cell phones. That could be the way that everyone can contact yeah, yeah. each other. The thing, it, it's a great idea, but first you have to generate it, and then you got to host it somewhere, and then you have to lead people there. You can't tell them, you have to lead them. Because remember, if I change the milking parlor around and I milk the cows from a different door, it's going to take me six months to a year to teach them to come in that door. People are more stubborn than that. <laughs> I mean, so I, I really like the idea, but we have to teach them where that is. And that's what this whole thing is about. How do, what, how do we start this structure? And, you know? and, and it's the big thing is it's got to be updated. Yep. Update. Yep. Update. There's so many good things out there, 
fed it up and, and it's never updated. Right. No, and so that, you know, so this is only the start. It might take us a year to get anywhere. But if you don't start, you get nowhere. I can guarantee you failure if you don't try. You know, and so, Steve, I'm going to ask, put you, I, I don't know. What percentage of our high school kids have a job or have to work a fair number of hours with their parents in a farm or something like that? 50%? The farm, very few. <laughs> well, um, that's what I was going to say. We have a lot of kids working in the cities and places like two up in Hudson. Yep. Obviously, the air being attacked, whatever. Yep. I'm, I'm going to say 30% or more of our kids have jobs. Yeah. And we also have kids who are involved in all three sports. We still have a fair number of that that I think you don't necessarily have in the larger communities sometimes. Um, so. Like they're busy from 3.30 to 5.30, 6 o'clock every day after school. So mm -hmm. taking those both together at a very oh. significant percentage. I would bet over 90%. I mean, so people keep telling me that our kids don't do much. Well, they don't know our kids. <laughs> Remember, our kids are disrespectful. They are lazy. They're never going to amount to anything and all this kind of stuff that I hear from parents. You know who first said that in written form? Socrates, 3,000 years ago. The kids haven't changed. We're still belly aching about the same stuff, and our kids got us to here. So we didn't fail. Our kids were great. So um, have a little faith in them. We wouldn't have all this tech stuff without smart kids. We'd still be living in a cave, whopping things over the head. Well, have a little faith in our kids. Only the bad ones make the headlines. The good ones seldom do. So thank you again for the opportunity, but I'm just kind of kicking this off, and of course I will help. But uh, I don't know who to go to, but we need to start somewhere. Because if we all had twice as many volunteers, we could get a lot more done. Well, and just the opportunity to help each other. Yes. Oh. Okay. So that let's say you needed some extra volunteers in a day, you'd send an email to me, and I would send it out to 53 cab company members and say, hey, Kiwanis needs a little help on this day. Can a few of you show up? Well, if you got two or three, that would be wonderful. Maybe that's the critical element of just to get two or three more. So maybe even just to interface between all the volunteer organizations. And, and Shari, I love that point, so we can help each other. Thank you, Bill. Thank all right. You. So, and I didn't have to make the PowerPoint work. That's even better. Yeah. <laughs>